I remember when I was around eight and I went to the Lighthouse Mission for my first time. The Lighthouse Mission is an establishment that helps poor people. I was there because my dad was giving a talk about the Bible. That was the first time I was struck by the insane amount of poor people. It shook my world that all of these people didn't have homes. And this was only a tiny fraction of all the homeless people in the world. Throughout, throughout history, poverty has been a major issue, and it is a bigger issue now than ever. In 2015, it was estimated that 150 million people are homeless worldwide. Habitat for Humanity showed that 1.6 billion people around the world live in insufficient shelter, in, 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 in insufficient shelter. This number has only grown in recent years. With coronavirus spreading around the world, many people have lost their jobs because of the economy shutting down. The Bible makes it clear. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that we are called to help the poor. Leviticus 19, 9 through 10 says, When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field uh, right up to its edges. Neither shall you gather the gleans of your harvest, and you shall, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you bear the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. This verse is a command from God to his people to care for the poor. He later gives us motive uh, besides loving our neighbor as ourselves. Luke 4, uh, 12, 14 says, But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid in the resurrection of righteousness. Luke says that if we support and love the poor, then God will reward us in heaven. Now that we know why we should help the poor, the question is how can we help the poor? Because poverty is an extremely complex subject, the way in, Christ the way in which Christians deal with poverty changes on two types of people, the visible poor and the invisible poor. This raises the question, how should Christians deal with poverty? Today I will show you the way in which Christians can help both these types of poverty. First, how do Christians assist the visible, poor, the visible poor? Before I can answer this, I need to define this category. The invisible poor are those who outwardly and confidently show and display their poverty and are not actively trying to get out of it. These are usually the people you see on the streets with signs and shopping carts, but there are outliers. These people have fallen into a mindset in which living on the streets is their home. Michael Schellenberger interviewed a homeless man named James. In this interview, James tells how he makes $820 per month in welfare and food stamps. James explains there is no reason for him to leave the streets. He says, he says that he can take all the drugs he wants and the cops won't even bother him. He also tells the story of when he, he sold fentanyl to 15 year olds with no consequences. James says that living on the streets is an active choice he will not leave. He is one of the visible poor. They do not want to leave the streets. They, know, uh, they want to stay. This raises the question, how can Christians help the visible poor? There is a two-step process in which we can help and aid these people. First, you need to convince them that they don't want to be on the street. This is done by spreading the gospel. The Bible has changed billions of people's lives and is still changing people's lives. Uh, think of Paul. Paul was a very influential Roman official with the role to oppress and persecute Christians. Once he was saved, Paul wrote a great part of the New Testament. Paul changed from a persecutor of Christians to a leader of Christians. If the Bible can change the life of Paul, then it can definitely change the life of a homeless person. It is important to note that this is no task we can do by ourselves. We cannot change someone's life. Only God can but he does use us. Once God has changed their heart, it is time to fix their body. This is the second step, help them physically. To help them physically, you first need to get them off any addictions uh, they're on, whether drugs, alcohol, or pornography. The reason for this is that these addictions affect the people out outwardly in a huge way and are the very opposite of healthy. These addictions destroy people's lives and we need to strip them from the visible poor. Matthew 5.30 teaches that we, do, uh, we need to do extreme actions to remove our sin. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than all your whole body go into hell. 
after these addictions have been dealt with, have him or her start looking for jobs and housing. So, uh, housing. So this is the way in which Christians can help and deal with the visible poor. Now, how do we help the invisible poor? Once again, before I can answer this, I need to define this category. The visible poor are the people who uh, are the people who are trying to get out of poverty, but are still in poverty. The reason they are called the invisible poor is because you usually don't see them on the street. Instead, they are trying to find jobs, houses, or taking care of their family. An example of this is a single mom with, his to with, with a toddler. Because she has a toddler, she needs to have someone watch the baby. She can't work and watch the baby, but in order for her to get a sitter, it costs, mon it costs the money she doesn't have. She is one of the invisible poor. She is trying to get out of poverty because she doesn't... Uh, She's trying to get out of poverty, but she doesn't have the resources. She's stuck. But another example of the invisible poor are widows. The Bible makes it clear that Christians need to take care of widows. James 1.27 says, Religion that is pure is undefiled before God. The, uh, the, God the, the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. The reason that it is key to help widows is because they, are reliant, they were reliant on their husbands for food, money, and housing. Once these resources were taken away, they have to start from scratch. And if that widow is old, then she can't work. It is also easy for people to get into a mindset where we forget about the rest of the world. But the truth is, truth is most of the poverty is in other parts of the planet. A massive percent of the world's population is in Africa. Africa alone makes 70% of the world's poverty. This is the invisible poor. How do we engage and help these people? First, Christians need to find the invisible poor. Because they are invisible, they, they aren't always easy to find. Christians need to devote time and resources to seeking these people. This is especially important because it is impossible to help someone that you don't know exists. The next step is to help, uh, the next step is to help them. This takes many different forms whether that's providing money, babysitting, or food. These are things that the church and the people inside the church can provide. We can bless these people by welcoming them into our community of friends, because that is what can encourage them and strengthen them. It is important to show that the gospel is also crucial with this type of poverty. The gospel is a comfort and a hope in time of trials, and it can be a huge blessing for these people. After showing uh, how to help the physical, uh, after, after showing how to help the physical poor, it is important to look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is the physical poor. Oh no, is the spiritual poor. A huge majority of our world is in physical poverty. But an even bigger number is the amount in spiritual, uh, spiritual poverty. The only answer to spiritual poverty is the Bible and the gospel. Christians need to spread the gospel to those who are in spiritual poverty. But the truth is, we can't do this. We need God's help. Christians need to engage more in poverty by spreading the word of God, helping the invisible and visible poor, because God, our Lord and Savior, commands us to. Thank you.